So I recently heard P-Rod talk about this method that he uses to film parts and to stack clips. And it's something that's so simple, so basic, it's amazing that more skaters aren't doing it. Since I've started using it, there's one thing for sure, I'm never going back. This is the method, I'm sticking with it for life. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over what it is and how you can start applying it to your own skating. So I've been skating now for like 20 years and I filmed a few different parts over that time but nothing that I'm truly, truly proud of. So one of my goals right now is literally just to film a part that I'm hyped on. One that's got my best tricks in that I can watch back when I'm old and saggy, show the grandkids and be like, look at that kids, granddad's legs used to work. So I got super lucky that one of my good homies Dimitri isn't just an absolute beast of a filmer but he's also the most committed filmer you've ever met in your entire life. This combined with the fact that when I'm trying to film a trick, I will literally keep going until I either get the trick or I pretty much can't walk anymore. So these two things combined is the perfect combination to stack an excessive amount of tricks, a phenomenal amount of tricks. The only thing is, that's not what was happening at all. Not even close. Instead, the reality was we would be going out session after session and coming home empty handed, no clips, every time, and they weren't just normal sessions, they were long, intense, sweaty sessions. So sweaty that the sweat was dripping from the gooch down the trousers. The kinds of sessions that should have really stopped like hours before, but instead it was last try number 72 and you were still going. So I'd leave these sessions feeling pretty stressed, you know, I felt like I was letting Dimitri down. I started doubting myself, like wondering if I could even film the tricks that I was trying to film. And it wasn't until I hit rock bottom that I started knobbing my own boards as just, you know, self-punishment that I had a realisation. So I realised I'd been doing it all wrong and there was a much better way to stack clips, which is P-Rod's way to stack clips. So in a video on the Nine Club Clips channel, P-Rod breaks down his me, myself and I part and in it he explains how from that part he started using this new system and method to go about filming tricks. If I would have an idea at any point in the day, at night, whatever, a spot popped in my mind, what I want, I would write it down. And then I would go strategically one by one. I wouldn't skip tricks. It would just be like, oh, this one's the first one on the list. This is the first trick I want to go get. My routine was during the week, practice a trick all week, try to mimic whatever the spot was as best I could with what I had in the park. And then on the weekend, go to the spot, try to film it. If I didn't get it, back to the park all week, back the next weekend and film it. And sometimes I would go back three, four weeks in a row. And that's still kind of how I approach filming now to this day. So over the years, I've noticed that beginner skaters spend so much time on just a really small number of tricks, obviously because they can do less, where as advanced skaters, they stop committing so much time to just single tricks. And instead they seem to just like half work on about 30 tricks at the same time. So the way that it usually works is we try each one of those 30 tricks, just like a handful of times over the course of a month, which can give you that perception that you're actually practicing that trick really hard because if you add up all of those attempts across the year, you have practiced it a decent amount of times, but in comparison to that beginner skater who's learning the kickflip and they've gone out and they've done 6,932 attempts at that kickflip over the course of a month, in comparison, the advanced skater is putting in really no time at all. So I lived in this delusion thinking that because I did a certain trick a couple of times at the skate park, I could just go out and film it. But the truth is the streets are so much harder to skate than parks and if you don't have a certain trick relatively consistent at a skate park, the chances of you getting it out in the streets are going to be so much lower. So the unfortunate truth is to really lock in a trick and to increase your chances of filming it, you need to practice a shitload, like an absolute shitload. And this is exactly what P-Rod's doing, he's really putting in that work behind the scenes so then when he comes down to skate in the streets he's just going to have so much more chance of actually landing that trick. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking like, mate, is that really it? The secret is to practice. And yes, yes it is, young Billy Bobbins. But be honest with me right now, when was the last time that you actually went out and did this and just practiced the trick for a whole week straight? Let me know down in the comment section if that's something that you do or if you have other methods to lock in your tricks because I'm intrigued. My perception of being at skate parks for like 20 years plus is that people aren't really doing this, myself included, until I decided to put P-Rod's technique to the test. I wanted to switch heel this set for my part and I live about a minute away from Macba so I was like, all right, I'll just go down to Macba, practice switch heels. So down I went, a week straight, just battling switch heels down the five over and over again, trying them, trying to get them consistent, trying to teach myself to commit to the trick better and just putting in the effort behind the scenes. So the week went well and I thought, you know what, I'm ready. Let's go to the spot. So along we went, everything was great. The sun was out. There was a couple of pigeons squawking in the distance. They went. And I thought, that's maybe a sign. Or maybe it's just some pigeons. I didn't know. 
started warming up, doing some tricks on flat, popping a couple of ollies down the stair set, and then suddenly, street cleaners came. Blasted the whole of the run up with water. And I was like, fuck's sake, man. So we're like, all right, no worries. Wait around for it to dry. They actually gave us their broom and let us sweep the water away a little bit, which was nice of them. Eventually the spot dried up, started warming up again, and cops came. So fuck, we're like, all right, maybe this week isn't the week for the trick. So I went back to Mac, but for the next week, did the switch heel over and over again, and finally went back to the spot the next weekend. And you know what? I got it in literally 10 minutes. The first one I stuck, I rolled away, and it was just like so much easier than any session that I'd ever had in the streets before. Maybe I got lucky, maybe I didn't, but I really did put in that work behind the scenes that I knew I could do that trick when I got there. There wasn't any doubt in my mind. And that belief aspect is also such a huge part of being able to film in the streets and commit to your tricks. And that belief comes through practice. So now the way that I go about filming is completely changed. I don't just go out into the streets and just like hope for the best, hope that I can do the trick that I want to do because I did it seven months ago back at the skate park. Nah, I'm like, all right, if I want to go and film a trick, basically going to do what P-Rod does and prepare for the tricks that I want to get. Now, of course, there's still going to be battles and we're still going to go home empty handed, but by approaching filming like this, I feel so much more confident that I can do the tricks that I want to do and the part that I want to film feels so much more reachable than it did before when I felt like I was literally never going to get another trick and film another trick ever again. So have a think about how you're currently filming and learning tricks. Are you doing it like P-Rod or are you just kind of winging it, going out hoping for the best, tricking yourself into thinking that you've actually practiced the trick when you really haven't? Let us know down in the comment section below along with any other methods or techniques that you use to learn tricks or to stack clips. I'm also gonna be putting a couple of videos on the screen now related to learning tricks faster and overcoming fear so you can commit to the tricks that you wanna do. So there we go, that's it for this video. Um, in a bit.